The views and opinions expressed on Beautiful Disasters are those of the panelists and not those of the Geeks Under the Influence Network, their sponsors, or anyone else involved. Also, there is going to be a lot of adult language used on this podcast, so please keep your little kitties away. Welcome back to Beautiful Disasters, Schlock Abuse Edition. Oh, man. So, I'm trying to think of a good Schlock Abuse. And, actually, let me start off by saying, this is F.U. Hunter, and with me, as always, is... The Groots. So, back to... I was trying to think of another good, shitty-ass remake. Unfortunately, Groots, you've seen all the other shitty-ass remakes after the amazingness of Rollerball last time. So, I thought, let's go a different direction. (laughs) I didn't realize that there might be a prequel to Gremlins. The now, amazingness of Rollerball? Yeah. Seriously? Yeah. yeah. Right. Now, I couldn't find a prequel to Gremlins, which I know is one of your favorite movies. But I did find a movie called Gremlin. And we're just going to pretend like maybe that was a prequel to Gremlins. <laughs> That's the movie that I assigned you for the schl- your schlock abuse. So, uh, yes, indeed. Can you tell everybody the greatness that is Gremlin? Remember, singular, not plural, Gremlin. Just Gremlin. Yes. <laughs> This was uh, 2017. Oh, wow. It's pretty recent. It is. Yeah. Uh, Why did they wait so long? I don't know. (laughs) But it has nothing to do. (laughs) Shocking. Nothing at all other than that there is a weird-ass sort of box. It might be a weird... It might be a weird-ass, like, Asian... I was going to say, is it like the Weird box? Ass. Is it like the box that, that uh, you know, Gizmo came in at the beginning of Gremlins? It's not. Okay. It's not. It's right. not. It, it's just, it's a strange box. Okay. Kind of almost feels like a Hellraiser Oh, situation. really? Yeah. <laughs> they get their movies a little mixed up? <laughs> yeah, maybe. Oh, God. Maybe. But the basic uh, gist of this movie is that this box can only be given to... Someone that you love. Okay. But it, it has, like, a gremlin come out of it, or just gives you bad luck, or... Oh, yeah, yeah, No, no, there's a creature. A, okay. A creature, a gremlin, that comes out of it that will legit kill you. Okay. But, you like, you're forced to give it to someone you love. You have to pass it on to someone you love. Wow. So it's like a shitty It Follows meets... The box is what it meets like. the box meets the ring. <laughs> yeah, sort of. Oh, yes, God damn exactly. It. Oh. All those things. I just want to give you a shitty attempt at another Gremlins movie, but this sounds even fucking worse. No, no, it, it is, it is, and well, I'll say the movie is not awful. Damn it, it's not awful. Yeah, yeah, I, they can't all be rollerballs. Damn it. The movie starts up with like. An old feller and his wife, who is infirm. Okay. And uh, he's aiming a shotgun at this box, and something comes out. It looks like a little, like, creepy crawly right. thing. CGI, but it's not terrible CGI. Like, you know, it's not the worst we've seen in yeah. many of our other exploits. Yeah. And uh, it attacks her, and he shoots it, and he ends up gifting this to his mother, the grandmother. Oh, wow. All right. He's like, well, she's old. <laughs> and She's about to die anyway. Fuck she's going to die anyway. Let me give this to her. If you're going to go out, you should be murdered by the creature in the box, all right? You know. What he didn't know is that His younger brother and his whole family was visiting Grandma. Oh, no. Oh, Jesus. This is where it gets fucking crazy. (laughs) So, this movie was directed by a guy named Ryan Belgart, who did Army of Frankensteins. No shit. Plural. Yeah. No, I've heard of that. The Jurassic Games. 
Okay, that makes me feel like that might be slightly a B movie version of Jurassic Park. I'm just going to throw it out there. He also did Dinosaur World. and Wow, he, so he, he's, he's kind of going out of his comfort zone by not doing a dinosaur in this. He did a few dinosaur movies. Yeah, there, he loves dinosaur few, movies. There's a few more in his uh, repertoire. So he's like the Sci-Fi Network Steven Spielberg. Is what you're saying? Yeah. <laughs> What do you think of dinosaurs? Think of whatever his name is. All right. Yes. Yes. <laughs> when, yes. when you want to do a dinosaur movie, but you only have a $2 million budget, think of this guy. All right. When you have a $150,000 budget, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> think of this guy. Yes. I, mean, I think $2 million is kind of what... When you say that's the, what the normal sci-fi movie budget is on these now? It could be. Okay. It could be. I don't even know. But yes. Uh, yeah. So... Dude has a box, ends up killing his wife, and he's like, I gotta offload this shit. Let me offload it on my grandmother, who's short for this world. Yeah. She's gonna die anyway. She's gonna die anyway. Might as well be ripped to shreds by some creature in a box. Might as well get it over to her. (laughs) Oh, shit. The fucking other part of the family is visiting her. Bad timing on their part, by the way. Ugh. One kid, one one kid's trying to suicide grandma, and the other one shows up. That's always very inconvenient. Indeed. So you got a uh, you got a husband, you got a wife, you got two kids. Now there's a young son, and then there's a teenage daughter who is rebelling, and she's out doing whatever the fuck she wants to do. Of course. So they're dealing with the box, and. They don't really understand it yet. Yeah. Like, it hasn't, like, the fucking creature hasn't come out of it yet. Yeah, so they're just fascinated by this random-ass box that got dropped off, not knowing Indeed. it's a murder present. So, the young daughter, the rebellious daughter, yeah, comes home with her boyfriend, and unbeknownst to anyone, she is pregnant. Uh-oh. She, like, 16. Yeah. All right. So she like sixteen and pregnant with a young boyfriend. It's a bad situation. Grandma's not gonna like that at all. This gremlin needs to pop out soon. And it does. <laughs> oh really? It fucking straight up murders the pregnant girlfriend's boyfriend. There you go. Well, okay. there's the, some loose ends have already been taken care of. Straight up, like, uh, and this thing looks like a. A tiny version of the Cloverfield monster. Okay. All right. Not really gremlin-like at all, it sounds like. No, 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 no. It, Weird it, appendages and shit. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Kind of like crawls like that and shit. Maybe <clears throat> maybe like the creatures in a uh, Quiet Place. Yeah. All right. Sure. Yes. Exactly. It's a weird situation where these things are have m- multi-legs and they fucking just like crawl up. But this thing is like... Eight inches tall. Really? At this point. So yeah. was, okay, I was thinking it was kind of big. Like, it's just it's like an action no, figure no, size. No, no, It gets bigger later. Oh, okay, okay. But oh, it, it, So now they're stealing from Alien, which is pretty much starts out small, gets a little bigger. Exactly. Right. It crawls out of the box. It's not big, but it is lethal. Okay. Kills the boyfriend. Right. Straight up. And the family is like, okay. So, Grandma has already been killed. Check. The cops have showed up for that, and yeah. they were like, we don't know what happened, blah, blah, blah. Boyfriend gets killed. Right. Boyfriend of the daughter, and they're like, uh, we don't know what to do, so we're going to just put his corpse in the basement? So, wait, is this the cop's suggestion, or they decide not to call the cops this time? No, no, no. They're not calling the cops this time. Okay, because they're... This is the family decision. They're like, you know what? Let's just put the body in the basement... <laughs> We, we, we got to figure out what the fuck yeah. is going on. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right. There's also a little bit of backstory that uh, this particular family uh-huh. has also had a child, a middle child, historically, that was abducted and killed. God damn, this family's got some fucking bad luck. Really? Yeah, yeah. This is outside of the fucking Outside of the fucking creature of the box murdering them. They're like, also, we had this other thing happen. Exactly. God damn. That was a thing. So 
when shit starts going south in the fucking uh, house, they're like, what the fuck? You know, the wife is like, she pulls a gun on the box and just like training a gun on the box. Like, what the fuck is happening? Has anybody thought about just throwing the box outside the house? Is that... Well, uh, apparently the uh, the curse is is that you absolutely have to pass the box to someone that you love. Right. So, obviously this is a problem because, like, the family is a family and they love each other and they don't want to do that. So they're dysfunctional. And the creature would be like, I don't know what to do here. They don't know what to do. Yeah. So like they're trying to like tick up arms against it and like it's not working at all. So the uh, pregnant daughter's boyfriend is killed. That's a thing. And now they're all holding up in the house. And, like, you know, they're trying to stay safe. And then the fucking creature comes out again. All right. And it ends up coming after the teenage daughter who is pregnant. Oh, shit. And it fucking attacks her. Uh Uh-huh. And basically... Oh, man. (laughs) Oh, no. Gives her a uh, on-screen fucking, like, gruesome-ass fucking abortion. Holy shit. Like, it throws its arm in, up in her and, like, yanks out. The... It just basically digs down into her belly and, Holy like, fucking... Holy shit. Well, I mean, if she had loved that baby... <laughs> All right, I'm sorry. What the fuck, dude? Yeah, it's it's kind of hardcore. Yeah. God damn. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah for you, you know what? You're kind of talking me into almost having to watch this now because that sounds fucking wacky as shit. It, it's, yeah, it's not... It's not wacky in an eighty cents. No, <laughs> no, it's but it's kind of kind of hardcore. All right, yeah, and she dies in the process, and they put her in the basement. God damn, these motherfuckers need to figure out some other plan than that. Because yeah, plan A, put the bodies in the basement, ain't helping at all. They're just adding motherfuckers to that shit. No, they were worried initially because like motherfuckers are dying in here and we don't know how to has explain this about, to the police. Has anybody thought about leaving the house? Is that just kind of a... Well, that's the next step. All right. And uh, After two... After technically almost three people have died, I guess. Like, whatever. <laughs> um, yeah. Then they go, maybe we should get the fuck out of Dodge. Yeah. Okay. So the mom and the younger son go to, like, a motel. All right. To try to escape this shit. Yeah. However, Gremlin shows up and fucking murders the mom in the hotel. Really? No, he doesn't need the box to travel. He can just kind of get out of the box, do his shit, go back to the box. Or does the box Mm -hmm. appear and then he pops out? He's like, yeah, fuckers, the box is mobile, motherfucker. I mean, that's his home, but, like... Apparently he's mobile. Okay, so he, he can yeah he can he can do a little traveling. And come he back can get up. around. Okay, he can get around. Yeah, and uh, yeah, murders the mom. This counts as a business trip. He can just write it off. Okay, and all the meanwhile, there's this detective that is trying to figure out what the fuck is going on from the first reported murder. <laughs> he doesn't even know about the other fucking murders, right? Exactly. Okay. He, exactly. So he, this dude's like, let me solve this one murder, not knowing that there's now multiple. <laughs> Homicides in the house, in the basement. All right. And it's not a bad performance. Yeah. I, I won't say that, but like, you know, it's it's legit. He doesn't know what's going on. Yeah. And he ends up going to a psychic. That's as detectives do. Yeah. That's I mean, when you're that's lost. Detective 101. When not you're unable to figure it out, next step, go to a psychic. Some weird ass shit's going on. Yeah. You know? I can't you figure it to. out. So yeah. You might as well get, go to a psychic. That's the obvious answer. Yeah, that's why there's always a psychic like st- place right next to a, a police station. I don't know if you noticed that's that. That's right. Before. Yeah, that's that's how it happens. Yeah, it's a psychic, and she tells him about the box, about how the box is cursed. Yeah, and that it is. You did, know, did he did he bring up the box to her, or she was like. Oh, the Andersons. Yeah, they're the ones with a box problem. All of us psychics know that shit. He might have brought it up. Okay. Like, you know, it's a little fuzzy. Yeah. Because, like, the movie is... It's a little disjointed. Okay. But I'll say he was trying to be on point. Yeah. And, you know, he's talking to the psychic. Yeah, the box is cursed. 
Of course, he doesn't believe it because he like lives in the real world. Yeah, I mean, but he did go to a, a, a psychic to help with solving the case. But now, like, she sounds like she's full of shit. Now back to real world, you know, solving the crime. Okay. Yeah, the box cannot be destroyed. All right, it has to be passed on. That's the thing. So it ends up being like two choices for the people involved. You either need to watch and wait and see what happens and all the fucking like terrible things that could be. Yeah. Or you can pass it on to someone that you love. And what is it? Uh, what was that movie with uh, Joel Osment? Haley Joel. Oh, God damn it. I know what you're talking about, but I can't think of the name of it either. So. Pass the, it's not pass the buck. It's like uh, pay it forward. Pay it forward. All right. You got to pay yeah. The pain forward. You got to pay the pain forward. Yep. Boom. So. Pass the buck. (laughs) That's what they should have called that movie. (laughs) Sorry, go ahead. (laughs) So the fucking, as a quote, uh, the the detective is like, that's the biggest load of bullshit I ever heard. Yeah. But yeah. So we're back in the house at this point. Right. We're back in the house. And it's at this point, just the dad and his young son. His wife has been killed. His daughter is dead. Question. What do they do with the wife's body? Uh, It's in the basement. <laughs> All right. I just had to make sure because I was keeping track of this. Yeah. yeah. Bring her in. Bow to the basement. All right. Yeah, it's in the basement. Okay, of course. All right. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so the dad and the son are trying to, like, fucking escape this shit. And the box keeps reappearing in every room that they that they run to right so it's obvious that they need to deal with this shit and um the creature comes out of the box in one of these rooms and at this point it's a creature you said was getting bigger in size it's not the little tiny i mean it's still small at this particular point okay it's still small crawls out of the thing he shoots it but it regenerates. Like, oh. it is not going to get killed. Okay. Okay. And the older uncle that passed it off to them ends up back at the house with a shotgun. He's like, I'm going to try to help you, but the fucking <laughs> creature kills his ass. Okay. And it's like, fuck. So he's like, sorry for cursing everybody. I'm back here to make... Making things right and then dies. He was like, I tried to give it to my to my grandma. My you mother. assholes had to come visit this you weekend. You had to visit and had to pass down a bunch. Yeah. Bring your pregnant Fuck. daughter. <laughs> <laughs> so the police end up showing up because yeah. there's like gunshots and everything going off. So it's like a, it's a big thing on the block. The dad ends up getting caught by the police. And he's being restrained. He's like, no, I need to help. I need to help. I need to help. And the gremlin grows bigger. Okay. This is when the gremlin grows bigger. Like bigger as in like xenomorph size, would you say? It just keeps growing in size. Okay. It looks the same, but it's bigger. Okay. I just didn't know if it's like we're talking like man size or like pumpkin head size. It ends up man sized. And there are some cops that are trying to interact with it, shoot it, right. blah, blah, blah. It ends up growing big enough that it, like, crawls up on top of the house. Okay. Like, it's a big-ass motherfucker. Now he's just showing his ass. He's like, I'm big, I'm proud, fucking check my shit out. Goddamn right. right. And um, it fucks up a bunch of cops. Oh, yeah. Which is understandable. I mean, you know. It doesn't have any rules at this point. We thought it, that the rules were, like, that... It killed people that loved other people. Apparently, it just at this point, it's like, yeah, you know what? Fuck it. These cops love each other. Heck, this counts, right? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so the lead detective that has been kind of like counseling the family and like trying to be good, he, he was like that nice detective. Yeah. You know? And he eventually like gets into the house and he finds the box and he grabs it and the giant gremlin gets shot and like disappears huh back into the box all right and so the the detective has it now and the box has this kind of 
clock-like dial on the top of it. Yes, yes, very Hellraiser of it. Exactly. And it's a thing that, like, would count down while people had it. Like, yeah. You had, you had it for so much time right. before like, you had to get rid of it. This is your give it to somebody you love or you're going to get fucking murdered. Okay. He gets the box and it resets and it starts again. So now it's his and the gremlin, like, shrunk down into the box. So now it's it's the detectives and the movie ends. Bam. Damn. It. Boom. See, what I wanted to see as the movie ends is he shows back up at the psychic woman's house and says, Will you marry me? I love you. And then hands her the box and then runs the fuck out. That's how it should have ended, but That should be the sequel. Yeah. <laughs> Just now wait, did you watch it through the end of the credits? <laughs> now movies work now. You got it. You... I did not see past the end of the credits. Okay. I don't know if there's an end credit scene. I'm just saying. <laughs> you can see the detective get on. He knocks on the psychic door, woman's door. She opens it up. He's on his knee. says, I know I've only talked to you once, but will you marry me? Slide the ring on. Hand her the box and get the fuck out of there. there Here's you your pre-wedding yeah, yeah. present. Here, I already got you something. Like, We're engaged. Here's my engagement present. And then get the fuck out of there. So... <laughs> wow, that sounds actually like someone actually took time to like write the script and make an actual movie. Like it, it wasn't terrible. I know I'm kind of disappointed. This sounds much better than the piece of shit movie you gave me. Um, yeah, sounds like you. I wouldn't say thoroughly enjoyed it, but didn't want to rip your eyeballs out. So I didn't. Uh, yeah, it wasn't great, but it was a thing. Yeah. All right. So, well, there you go. Uh, I'm disappointed. I really was hoping for a much shittier <laughs> fucking uh, attempt of, of a Gremlin movie. Uh, true. True. So, uh, well, that was Gremlin, and uh, I'm disappointed at this point. But uh, besides that, let's just go into everything real quick. Um, uh, Beautiful Disasters, you can go, we have a Facebook page, you know, throw us some comments, any suggestions. You know, one thing we keep kind of bringing up is is obviously suggestions for our full episodes, you know, movies you think would fit in there. But also, shit, you got a schlock abuse, and you have a specific host that you would like to hear be inflicted <laughs> with, just throw it our way, you know, throw us some suggestions. Definitely. Um, we have the email. It's uh, beautifuldisasterspodcast at gmail.com. All right. And then, of course, you can get to all the amazing Geeks of the Influence podcasts at, at – uh, www.guipodcast.com there's some amazing shows that, you know there's different variety for people you know say you're a fan of horror there's a podcast on there called From the Mouths of Madness that I've heard is pretty good you know different things like that so, god damn right yeah so uh, but and uh, uh, definitely check out uh, we got a lot of designs I over the that was the next one over the entire GUI podcast but we spectrum. just got a new fucking kick ass design I need to fucking order the shit out of god damn right fucking proud of it it's um, a mixture of beautiful disasters and schlock abuse um, I'm fucking hyped I'm gonna order that shit but yeah check that out Fuck on yeah. T Public there's a link on our web on the website. So, um, anything else you want to throw out there? Uh, none other than thank you for <laughs> listening. I've been the Groots. Have you honor. Thank you. Coming straight from the mouths of madness, I'm Lowdown. I'm F.U. Hunter. Do you love horror? We fucking do. So this is a podcast dedicated to all things in cinematic horror. We're talking movies, television, composers, special effects artists. We're going to fucking cover it. So if you love horror, embrace the madness. In a world ravaged by movie studios that keep rehashing the same things, only one podcaster has the guts to make it even worse. Join Mike the Hobbit as he traverses the internet to bring you some of the best and worst ideas for reboots, remakes, and reimaginings of some of your favorite and least favorite TV and film properties. Ideas like a John Waters He-Man movie, Fantastic Four the Musical, and Aliens, done entirely with marionettes. What podcast would bring this evil upon the world? This is Smack My Pitch Up. Available anywhere you get your podcasts. 
GUIPodcast.com. <laughs>